Hello, everybody. I have not done a thing for a long time, but I want to do this. I want to do this really, really badly because this is Talia and Evatel's The Trial of Steve Denuser's video. And I have a lot, a lot of thoughts about Steve Denuser and a, and a few thoughts on Talia and Evatel as well. Just to get it done really quickly, I have a cat here. If she meows, you know, it is what it is. Uh, also... Taliesin and Evatel, I know, are very, very positive individuals. If they can be positive about something, they will be. <laughs> like, if at all humanly possible when it comes to WoW, if they can be positive, they will be positive. They always try to do that. And I'm not against that, really. Everything is always so 100% one way or the other. And so when everything goes negative, it's nice to have some positivity. And sometimes I agree with that. Not everything is as bad as some people make it out to be. Some things aren't as good as people as some people make it out to be either, though. <laughs> and they definitely do that a lot. Where they're like, it's not that bad. It's really bad. <laughs> it's really, really, really bad. <laughs> so... I'm gonna watch this. We're gonna see what he says about Steve the Newser. I have a lot of thoughts about Steve the Newser. It's why I wanted to make this this video because I don't hate the guy. He seems like he loves what he does and he has a lot of fun doing it. And if I had his job, I would have a lot of fun doing it too. I, but the things that he did, <laughs> the, the, the things that he wrote, holy crap, I have so many problems with it. I can't play WoW right now because of it. Like, I, I just, I just can't. I cannot stand what he did to the story. So, we're gonna watch it. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna have fun. Hopefully, Taliesin has this bad habit of saying stuff that pisses me off because it's so categorically wrong. <laughs> like, he'll be like, nim, 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 and then he'll have the holier than thou attitude of, well, I'm right and you're wrong, and so I laugh at you for being stupid, and it's like, oh my god, gee, boom. <laughs> but, we're gonna go. Oh, there you are, Tally. I've been looking everywhere for you. What are you doing in Season of Discovery? Who knows, Evie? And that's the whole point, isn't it? Finally, we get to enjoy WoW without the spoilers, without the <laughs> data mining, without all the guides and answers and hand-holding. Yeah, that lasted for like a week. finally <laughs> is fresh WoW, naked WoW. Awesome. Are you going to be, be fair, a warlock tank? To be fair, I haven't played don't, season don't two. Don't tell me what I can be, Evie. Don't spoil it. The whole point is discovery, okay? I'm discovering it. Is that what you did in phase one? I didn't play phase one because I was busy, but that just oh, means I've got phase even one was more so to discover now, doesn't it? It's like, Again, for like season a week. of double discovery for me. Season of <laughs> duo discovery. Sounds good. So, what's the plan? I don't know. You know, that's the magic, isn't it? I can go anywhere, do anything. Thing. Confident that adventure is just around the corner. I mean, technically, you could always do that in classic. That's kind of what it was about. You know, Wowhead has some really good guides on where all the runes and stuff are. Yeah, can you send those to me? <laughs> Knowledge is yeah. power. Yeah, no, Hello? for real though. <laughs> I I know that's how. I love I love that opening. That was really funny. Uh, and, and so true. When, when when Season of Discovery first came out, me and 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 a friend like we we played it, and it really was like for the first week, it was no guides, no add-ons, no anything. We're just gonna go in. We're gonna like get fully into it. We're gonna enjoy all the puzzles. We're gonna have fun doing all the stuff, and then we kind of like got what we wanted, and we were missing a few things. And it's like, ah, I really want to to do the warlock tank thing. Or man, I want to find this one specific rune that I saw someone using or that people were talking about in the general channel. Where is it? And we ask them and they're like, go look at Wowhead. <laughs> it's like, well, no, I'm gonna wander around for like six hours and I'm gonna find it. And then you don't find it. <laughs> And then, and then you gotta go look at a guide. 
<laughs> you're plumb out of options at that point. It's like, I don't know where it's at. I want it. And people have it. And <laughs> people have already found the darn thing because they've got the guide. And they're using the guide and they have it. And I don't. And I don't know where to get it. And they won't tell me where it is. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> internet Taliesin here and welcome to another episode of the weekly reset Taliesin and Evertel's wondrous wisdom show in a week I like that where light. it's it's been a while since the last week actually hasn't it and that's not entirely our fault like, I, I don't like to make excuses that, that, and that I don't like to bang light, on about like IRL really cool. problems but in fairness we've got a big hole in our house which oh. is why you never invite oh, no. Sylvanas around for D&D &D, because before <laughs> you know it she's ripping up the crown of domination and all shit breaks loose so Sorry, but I really wanted to make this episode, even if it's a little tiny little bit late, because there's one particular piece of news that I very much want to discuss. So, things that have Probably happened the title of the video. since our last episode. Season of Discovery Phase 2 is, of course, underway in all its Blood Moon PvPing, Gnome Regan raiding glory. Love is in the air with its all new quest lines focused on self love, which actually, you know, I thought I didn't really care. Is that masturbation? <laughs> Is that what we're talking about? I I have not played the new Valentine's Love in the Air thing. To be honest, all the new updated versions of the holidays still don't feel like enough to me. They, they don't really feel like a real revamp. It's like, here's the old stuff plus like a quest line. <laughs> and then like one or two new dailies or something. Uh, it's fine. I, I kind of expected more, to be honest. And, and, eh. But, but I haven't played the new Valentine's thing because, like I said, I, I, I cannot play it. After, after I did the whole Emerger Still story, I couldn't. Like, I can't. It's, it's awful, you guys. And I can't stop thinking about how awful it is. <laughs> like, it, 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 it actually drives me insane. <laughs> I, I, I don't even want to be in Dragonflight. I got to do go do old content because I just, I cannot. And that's when I can force myself to log into WoW because that is also a challenge. ...about WoW holidays, especially Love is in the Air, but I have to say... That's a vibe I can really get behind right now. I needed that, honestly. Thanks. And this is like two okay. weeks ago now, but don't worry, I'm going to just mention it really Without quick. Without context, Carly that Lonsdale just sounds like a made her big trip. announcement no about the about. Mystery 10.2.6 pirate patch, which she finally revealed... Nothing. It would be staying a mystery, so yeah. I know they're yeah. wrong. It was this stay is very a exciting. Mystery. Possibly too <laughs> exciting. Possibly building a bit too much hype for a 2.6 patch, which left unchecked to fester and brew for another month of no expectation lowering. Real news might just reach a point where the actual point two point six mini I patch that happens I don't, I don't can't know possibly it's about. match the My audio point two point six mega patch that the community has had time to imagine. But that's probably just me being paranoid since my ceiling collapsed I'm yeah sure exactly no happen. i agree with that 110 percent. they are putting so much hype behind the whole fact that this is going to be a patch that is completely hidden they're going they're not going to reveal anything about it they're going to keep it all a mystery we have no idea what it is it's this one patch in the whole like we have we have a whole timeline of things that are going to happen from now until the launch and even a little bit into the launch and we've, we've got all this new stuff but there's this one patch that's completely a mystery and it it's super hidden and it's it's gonna be just a like a vendor a mini game and that's it like <laughs> it's gotta be right it's it's just gonna be another point something pat minor patch but it, they're putting so much mystery behind it that it's got to be this wild and crazy thing that can be anything. It could be anything, you guys. It could be a new raid. No. <laughs> no. It's not going to be, though. <laughs>
When has anything like that ever happened? Yeah, see you in March, the pirate patch, I suppose. No, what I want to talk about today is World of Warcraft narrative director Steve Denuser and the news which he has since confirmed that after rumors first started circulating from his conspicuous absence at BlizzCon, we now know that he has left Team 2 and Blizzard as well. His LinkedIn profile having been updated to suggest that his employment with the company, confirmed by himself, ended in yeah, November in, in, last at BlizzCon, year, which would yeah. make it around the time of BlizzCon. Now, yeah. This might seem like strange news for me to want to talk about, which, by the after way, all, oof, thousands wow. <laughs> of people were just laid off yeah, that from too. Blizzard far <laughs> more recently than this, and I certainly don't want to speculate too much or go digging for drama on this. And that was after so many people already had left from the whole forced to return to work thing like they were talking about that for a, like the majority of dragonflight's lifetime where it's like every day we're losing people and we've we've got like this board of things that we can do and we just gotta line through it because now we no longer can do that we just gotta strike things from things that are possible now because we are just losing people losing people losing people losing people and then this happens <laughs> it's like are there any people left at Blizzard at this point? <laughs> I don't... There can't be that many. <laughs> We've lost so many people. And it's weird because they absorbed a whole bunch of companies to get Dragonflight to be where it's at. Like, they absorbed the, 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 the toy... I think it was Toys for Bob, the people who did, like, the Spyro games... Did they also absorb the Crash Bandicoot team? I don't think so. But they they definitely absorbed the Spyro team in order to, like, get this done. And then I guess they fired them all. Like, I just... <laughs> But I think our job as WoW creators is to talk about the game, but also to document the game to some degree too. And the narrative director leaving, especially one whose time in charge of the story was so controversial in so many ways, added to the fact that it kind yes. of slipped under the radar <laughs> for so long, Very. added to the fact that we are looking at such a bold new direction and focus on story and how it's told with the World Soul Saga, yeah, added to the fact I that I go. personally have no that Steve left the company for months and wanted to stay silent. WoW has never been primarily story focused. It just hasn't been. It's always been a world building thing. Like we are going to world build with our story. We are going to like that that's what we're going to do. And and, and, and all the story has been sort of like just on the fringes of relevant. Not always super relevant but always sort of there and and that's always kind of been the charm of it is that you have to put it together by experiencing it you have to live in the world in order to know what the world is and that's kind of cool it's kind of neat you know you you make your first Pandaren and you're wandering around on this beautiful island and stuff and, and you're just having a good time and then you notice something in the distance moving and you're like what the heck is that and as you're progressing through like this this whole storyline of the beginning of the pandaren experience where when you're on this island and you're 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 doing the quest and stuff and then you find out you're on the back of a turtle <laughs> and, and 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 it's a wandering isle scenario where the the giant turtle is constantly moving around and it's why no one has ever found this island <laughs> And that's so cool. And then when you eventually get off the darn thing and you like say, say, for example, maybe you've played WoW for a while and you, you you've like maybe tried a night elf or something before you tried being a, 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 a Pandaren or maybe after being a Pandaren, you go to the night elf zones and you find all these turtle bones in the sea. And you're like, what's up with that? And it's like, ah, <laughs> there's story here there's lore and that's so interesting and cool that's what wow has always been so all of this all of these attempts to like put main story stuff into wow has always been a complete failure <laughs> like as far as i can tell they try they're not good at it <laughs> and and that 
goes into a lot of what Steve Denuser's big failings were, is that he tried really hard to put a story, a main storyline into WoW and failed miserably. <laughs> that seems to be the thing, to me at least, where it's like, if you look at Legion, there was a main story, kind of, but it was more about the classes and the class and the class stories and, and, and their quest stories with an overarching theme. And that's been the sort of thing for a while now. But then you get to BFA. There's a story of BFA. It's not a, it's, it's, it's got some problems. <laughs> it's, it's not great. And it, there's a lot of stuff cut out of it because there's just no time. You can't sit down and just have story moments in WoW. There's just no time for that. <laughs> they they do not allot themselves the appropriate amount of time to give any amount of story, any kind of gravitas that it would need in order to be a cohesive story with the themes that they're going with. How are you going to have an old god story as the last patch of an expansion? You can't do that. <laughs> but they did it anyway. They tried. <laughs> you and that's been the big problem, and especially in Dragonflight. They wanted so badly to have a main story, and it just does not work. <laughs> and I want it to work. I love them. I would love a main story. I would love for them to give the time and attention that World of Warcraft needs to have a story, but they cannot do it. <laughs> and I do not believe that the that the World Soul Saga is going to prove me wrong. I just don't. <laughs> and out of respect to him and my multiple sources within the company, until it was more public knowledge, meaning that yes, actually, I absolutely am going to talk about Steve Denuser leaving the game. Because make no mistake, there will be large Good. parts That's what I'm of here the community <laughs> that will be celebrating this news. Denuser was one of the most maligned and controversial narrative leads in the game's history, and many players will be fair. <laughs> The guy who came before him was was not a good person. <laughs> the most controversial, maybe because he wasn't obscenely bad. <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't actually someone who needs to be in prison. <laughs> so. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> see the end of his leadership as a liberation not even entirely sure i am allowed to say what he work. did on youtube anymore if you that's how Steve bad afrasiabi so, was you're right the I'm guy who came before this guy online fantasy content and this so. is a perfect opportunity to do just that <laughs> as we look back at some of the defining moments of steve denuser's wow career the burning of teldrassil this is not his fault I'm going to say, I, I don't know what Taliesin is going to say, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say it. That is not Denuser's fault. What Whoever is saying that that is something that Denuser did, no, 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 no. In case you don't know, Afrasiabi was a huge Sylvanas fanboy. Like, every, as far as I'm aware, he really was hung up on female characters being batshit insane because he was a very twisted individual who did not have a grasp on people. <laughs> he did not have a grasp, especially women. He, he believed women should be one of three things and none of them are good. <laughs> he, he was a bad, bad, bad person. And he was in love with Sylvanas. And he, he is responsible for... For a lot of really bad things with any any female characters that you can see in WoW when they have themselves a, a really rough time and going just a little unhinged, that was Afrasiabi's fault because he believed that that's what women were. <laughs> The whole joke with Jaina is a dreadlord because, she, like, all the way up through Wrath, like, from Warcraft 3 all the way to Wrath of the Lich King, she was like, no, uh, we need to get along with the Horde. We, we need to, to, to keep the old alliances 
between the Alliance and the Horde and everybody else. We need to keep that together. We need to, you know, protect the peace and all that stuff. We need to get along with Thrall. We need to be Thrall's best friend and, and, and keep that stuff going. Keep the world from just evolving into this horrible massacre, world war awfulness because there are other more important threats out there. That was Jaina's whole thing. And then Cataclysm happened and all of a sudden her hair goes white and she's like death to everybody D kill them all dismantle the horde you know going wacko <laughs> that was a frassy abby's fault <laughs> when taronda has the exact same character development three times where she is gung-ho and get out of my way and i'm in charge and i'm going to slaughter kill 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 and i'm not going to be a priestess really in any capacity i'm just going to be this homicidal maniac with a bow that's afrasiabi when sylvanas went from i will i will pr like d protect and defend the rights of the undead to live where i will you know be a champion for the forsaken the, 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 like, literally, the calling themselves the Forsaken because they were forsaken from the world and she will safeguard them <laughs> and protect their right to unlife and, and give them the freedom and free will that is, like, beholden to them, granting the undead free will. That was Sylvanas. <laughs> and then... This happens, and then and then after the wrath of the Lich King and Cataclysm happens, a frosty Abbey. <laughs> so this was going to be a frosty Abbey's big magnum opus, and he and, and and then he gets thrown out, and nobody knows what he was planning to do. Like literally, he forces the burning of Teldrassil to go forward. And then he's booted. And everyone was like, he didn't tell anybody what his plans were for this. <laughs> except that it was going to be big. Trust me, guys. Trust me. It's going to be great. It's going to be big. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have this great big storyline. And it's going to it's gonna have all this cool shit happen in it. And here's a few like main key points. And then he gets thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, oh, what are we supposed to do with this? And so the burning of Teldrassil, first of all, was Afrasiabi's idea that he pushed forward, not Steve the Newser's fault. <laughs> it happened too much anymore, but there was a point back... Bile directed towards Steve from the community was connected to the hatred that the community felt for the burning of Teldrassil's storyline that opened the expansion. Lots of people hated this as a narrative concept, lots more hated the execution of it and the corner it painted Sylvanas and the Horde into for just about the entire expansion afterwards. I actually like probably I say, wouldn't have hated it when if it was going somewhere better than where it ended up. Specifically towards Because <clears throat> it was a so real, just for the sake like, tearjerker. Of a, of a, of a quest no, line. Like obviously, a, that's silly. It, he had nothing it, it to do with It made you feel things. So, as a simple so, look at his old LinkedIn, if it had gone somewhere that event was revealed better, to the public, so it already been in might have been a good story. Months, thing, God, maybe but, a year hmm. by then. Denusa was a humble quest designer, actually working on Legion quests. That terrible expansion that everyone hates. Which quests, though? That's important. There. are Legion was kind of a mess when it came to its quest design because some of it was like absolutely amazing and, and 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 super super good. Some of it was infuriating, and some of it was forgettable. <laughs> so it's like, which quests were his? I I want to know. Steve was made a lead narrative director after Alex Afrasiabi was moved off the team and eventually campus for being a creepy abuser man. So yep. in the grand scheme of the news legacy criticism, it should be quite uncontroversial to call this unfair. Yeah. I don't know what you're thinking. Yeah, you're yeah, yeah. thinking, whoa, Tally, is this whole section going to be a defense of Steve Denusa? Is this what I'm watching right now? And no, no, it's, uh, it's not, I promise. Two. I don't believe you. <laughs> like, uh, no offense, Taliesin, but you have to admit, you do that an awful lot. <laughs> so I, I, 
it, you say that, <laughs> but I'm not sure I believe you. Ooh, the Nathanos <laughs> self insert. So you might. What? I don't know anything about this one. Because I always thought, again, this was more Afrasabi thing. Because. Nathanos has been part of the game since vanilla. Nath Nathanos was was there. He got the whole facelift thing much later on, sure, but he was always in the game. He was like a he was like a, a killable mob with like a couple of quests in 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 vanilla. But then like in in uh, you get like this dark mirror thing. I think it was around Wrath time. And in Cataclysm, he had his big, like, re-debut, I think. It's been a while since I've looked at Nathanus' history. But that was still around Cataclysm time. So Denuser was not even part of the game yet. So it couldn't be him. I always... So I, I thought that it was... Afrasiabi, because that always made sense. Like he, because he, he, you know, he had that whole thing with Sylvanas. He, 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 he saw Sylvanas as like his character. He was responsible for just about everything that had to do with Sylvanas' storyline all the way through Warcraft Three. Like that, that, that was his character that he played around with. So Nathanos would be Afrasiabi's. Self-insert, not Steve the Newsers. Steve I've the heard Newser that Steve wasn't the is a weird Sylvanas fanboy who wrote Nathanos as a self-insert so that he could <clears throat> romance her or whatever. But this is like <clears throat> Yeah, that doesn't make fact. sense. If you Google his name right now, it will not take you long to find people saying this about really? him. Really? It being a topic that was repeated in some very successful videos from some much bigger creators than us. So I've never heard it. any creator. And you must make up your own mind on this, of course, and how true it is. But first I would ask, is making self-inserts even a bad thing? If it is, then I hate to break this to you, but you are going to f***ing hate the new head of... First... Steve Denuser is definitely innocent of this because this is a, a, an Afrasiabi thing. Uh, okay. Uh, but, and then the whole self-insert thing. Again, I don't, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. I do think it's kind of lazy writing. And, I mean, yeah, World of Warcraft does a lot of self-inserts. They, they, But they do that mostly to poke fun at stuff. And, yeah, Chris Metzen has the whole thrall and variant thing but he also has the malfurion thing i i don't think a lot of people think about that but chris benson has gone on record saying that malfurion is his favorite character which is funny because he doesn't do anything with him nobody does anything with malfurion <laughs> especially not steve the Dancer. Of WoW's story, Chris Metzen. Is this even what Steve actually but did? This, is, this, this is entire nothing. thing is mostly based on basically three tweets from 2018. One where he is stood in front of the Sylvanas statue at Blizzard with the tagline, The War Chief is pretty insistent yeah, that's, I get back to work. That's, One that, where that's that's just horde loyalty stuff. That's not Sylvanas what? Uh, okay, and then the, the, this one. He says, Day three. I returned to Ogrimmar to report on my progress. I complimented the war chief on her crimson gaze and asked how my own eyes might achieve a similar glow. I found her reply discomforting. And, I mean, I guess in hindsight, this could have been sort of a, a, a hinting towards getting the... Uh, the 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 night elf appearance thing where you can have the red eyes and the pale skin and you can like look like a dark ranger so it, 2018 i don't think i think that's still in bfa time uh, i think yeah because because legion was 2016 2017 and then bfa was 2018 2019 and then uh shadowlands was 20 and 21 and then yeah yeah so uh yeah this is nothing the, 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 that this is just more horde loyalty stuff plus some possible foreshadowing of us getting uh, the red eyes and stuff. That, that's... And a tweet from when Wowhead data mined the new Nathanos model in the BFA data, which looks nothing like Denuza, where he <laughs> said, it's like looking into a dark mirror. Mm, 
that one's a little rough. Like I get it, the whole dark mirror thing being the the the, the name of the short story, and but I think you could argue that the new the like the like the 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 facial hair is kind of denusery, and ha ha ha, bald man says guy with hair is like looking in a mirror, <laughs> which is you know just funny, but. <clears throat> that one's a little rough, I will say. the The fact that he tried to, like, I I think that's just bad writing and not. Reference, Sylvanas. of course, the short story "Dark Mirror" that he wrote to detail. I don't how think that got this yeah. new body, the body of his cousin. A dark mirror, of course, being a magical item which is supposed to reveal to the user secrets and hidden truths. And I mean, I'm just gonna be honest here. This is the flimsiest, most uncharitable <laughs> hating for the sake of it bullshit I have ever heard in I, my entire I, life. I, I have like, to seriously, agree. Again, this, this is more of the accusation stuff was that always is being bullshit. This was like onto... a man being enthusiastic about. Story that he was in charge of writing the kind of behavior we say we want and some of the shit that he's caught for these three tweets is absolutely wild and absolutely unfair criticism but it does lead us into some much trickier areas okay. three Sylvanus. So, Steve was not in charge of the story when BFA was conceptualized and right. the learning of Teldrassil and Sylvanus's part in it were decided on and set in motion, right. but he was in charge soon after that. So, yeah. all of the stuff that people hate about BFA, is that his fault? And this is a really tough one to call when you consider the now fairly well documented BFA's history. We've got an entire video that goes into this subject in a lot more detail, but first-hand accounts from inside the team at the time paint a picture of of Alex Afrasiabi, the, the creepy abuser man, being uh -huh. dead set on the Sylvanas <coughs> villain arc, which yep. he started with Teldrassil and was due to end with her death at some point. This was an idea that wasn't particularly well planned out. Although it does make sense. They had uh, they had all those little voice lines like, at the hour of her third death, she will usher in our coming. So it does kind of make sense that they would go with like the BFA thing where it's like her whole storyline her whole villain arc sort of ends with her dying and then Nazoth. That makes sense. I, I, I buy that. I will say uh, he is he is also right in that uh Afrasiabi was in charge of everything leading up to BFA and the and the and the burning of Teldrassil and stuff and had all that I already talked about that a little while ago. Uh but Steve the Newser was in charge <laughs> from 8.1 onward. <laughs> so, all of that essentially lands at his feet. Like, maybe it wasn't his fault, but it was his responsibility. <laughs> like, sure, he's the lead narrative whatevers. He's, he, he, he's in charge of it. He doesn't actually do it. It's still his responsibility, okay? Like, come on. That's his job. <laughs> his job is to be the narrative lead. You can't say it's not his fault when he's in charge, okay? <laughs> That's ridiculous. So, saying that it's a difficult thing is not that difficult. Yes, he was put in a very rough spot when it came to the burning of Teldrassil. How do you walk that back? How do, how do you, like, and, and, and obviously you don't. You don't walk that back. You go forward with it, but you find, you, you pay attention to it. You know, you pay deference to it. I, I, I think the sort of political drama that came about because of it and the, the, the Battle of Darkshore was fine. It was, it was good. It needed more than a patch, though, and it, it needed a patch all its own, which a lot of people, especially now, would find sort of controversial because it's like, oh, God, more Night Elf stuff. You say that now, <laughs> but back then, it, it was, it, you needed that sort of follow up. The Burning of Teldrassil is probably the first major capital to be destroyed, like the first 
like major racial capital to be destroyed in game. Like, yeah, we had Theramore, and guess what? We had a lot about Theramore. We're still hearing about Theramore stuff. <laughs> like, and we needed that with Teldrassil. And we didn't get that. We got a piece of a patch with the Battle of Darkshore, which had some intriguing political stuff to it. And we had like the 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 whole Warfront thing, and Warfronts was a whole system that was borked on its own. So hello kitty boop. Like that wasn't Denuser's fault, but the fact that, you know, so little of the story was about that was his fault. <laughs> And the whole Sylvanas thing. Where do you go from there? Well, you don't turn her into a Dementor who's working for the aspect of death who we know nothing about and don't know the reason for. And then just have that be somewhere in the background. <laughs> like, I will say the Sourfang stuff was good, though. I, I like how that sort of developed. But the Sylvanas stuff, I'm sorry, was a complete mishandling. All popular in the team. There, there's that whole saying where it's like, uh, you, you, you need to turn crisis into opportunity, and they didn't do that well. <laughs> Large, and then when Afrasiabi was finally thrown out for his creepy abuser shit, the team mm -hmm. were not just messed with that huge mess of a plot to sort out in BFA, but were also apparently told by Blizzard leadership that the planned endpoint, Sylvanas's death, mm -hmm. was categorically not allowed to happen. That's she was just considered too valuable to the franchise monetarily. And so now. So? I don't get that one. Like, they've killed Archimond off and literally said, oh yeah, he's dead, but if we still need him for things, we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna hold back in bringing him back. We'll, we'll find a way to get him back if we need him back. Why couldn't you just do that with Sylvanas? She's already dead. <laughs> like, she's, ar she's already a Forsaken. She's already undead. Yeah, kill her off. But if you still need her for something, you bring her back, you know? <laughs> it's like, it ain't that big a deal. <laughs> so that makes no sense to me. Especially since, uh, like, especially since after the burning of Teldrassil, a lot of people wanted to have that big climactic final fight with the big bad, you know? They wanted to have the big uh, fight with uh, Sylvanas and, and, like, kill her or whatever. Even if killing her isn't the end of her we still wanted it and i don't know why we couldn't do that just saying no can't do it that's weird it's odd but whatever i mean if that was true then they probably should have said something like that's what i'm uh, that, that's what i'll say about that is steve the news or someone should have come out and said hey uh Afrasiabi, like, that I think is the biggest mishandling of this is that there wasn't an official statement saying, hey, Afrasiabi wrote this story with Sylvanas and now he's gone and the leaders at Blizzard are telling us that we can't finish his story. <laughs> you say that to the community, you know? And let the community work out what it wants you to do. Or at the very least, just have them be informed while you decide on what to do next. And then, you know, keep keep a, a keep a keep an ear out to the community on what they're doing and follow suit. You don't just do what they did, which was go gung ho into some wild crazy shit. <laughs> They have this and character just go, on the most villain like it, of tough. villain arcs who they weren't allowed to kill. <clears throat> and honestly, if that's true, and it definitely is, then I'm overall pretty sympathetic to the job that the team oh, managed. Yeah. There's Rough. stuff I really don't like. The fact that BFA ends with us still not knowing who she's working with being the biggest issue in BFA's story, in my opinion, <coughs> and the lack of context given to her relationship with... Now, hold on. BFA had a lot of problems. <laughs> 
saying that that was the biggest one is a little unfair to all the other problems that BFA had because BFA had a lot of problems with its with its story and its narrative. It was three expansions crammed into one expansion, and it didn't do that well. It was it 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 was the Sylvanas and Sourfang storyline. The it it was it was the Fourth War. It was the whole uh. Boralus, Jaina, Zandalari, King Rastakan, Wansamdi thing. It was the Ashara thing. It was the Old God thing. It, it, there was so much in BFA beyond this one story. This one story was like the first... It was maybe half of the leveling experience and half of the final patch. Not even the final patch. Half of the point two patch. <laughs> so it was it was half of two patches. So I guess it was one patch of BFA, and it needed to be its own expansion, just like all the other little bits in in BFA needed to be its own expansion. Heck, the island expedition alone probably should have been its own expansion, <laughs> because of all the story that's hidden in that in in that one game that is just like setting stuff up for things, but it doesn't tell you any of it because it's a, it's island expeditions and no one's paying attention to the story that's in that. But there's so much of it. Mm. <laughs> there was that a lot in BFA. So saying that this was the biggest problem in BFA, ah. Uh, with the jailer in game or the biggest the biggest issue with bfa's in that narrative but there are other things mm. the loyalist and sourfang rebel choice quests the relationship between sylvanas and anduin in the shadowlands cinematics which i think they did a good job on and i also think that the ending yeah, that they managed they to more, that arc yeah, with sure. the trial of sylvanas and her banishment to the moor both in concept and execution was a way better resolution than they had any right to be Ah, I don't know about that. Concept, sure. It was a nice salvaging. But the execution... Uh, the best thing you can say about that cinematic was that they had redesigned the whole facial movement stuff. Which was kind of neat and kind of cool. Because, like, you, you see this cinematic and you're expecting the, the flappy mouth, like, sort of middling... Uh, stuff that they've had in the past like literally go watch anything to do with like the bfa quest line cutscenes. like you'll see <laughs> sort of mouths and then you watch this cutscene, and it's articulated mouth movements and 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 like the facial expressions and it's way better mechanically but the story of it Nice salvaging, I guess. Good. It, it's an okay concept that was middlingly executed. You know, <laughs> like, like, I I would not say that it was a success in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> given the circumstances. I think that's genuinely good. There's no denying, <coughs> though, that this whole period is a bleak and not fondly remembered one in WoW lore. Like I say, you must make up your own mind. For this one, I think I'm going to choose to be reasonably charitable and on the weight of evidence, give Steve the benefit of the doubt and say it probably wasn't his fault. It was a no- No, I don't agree with this. Yes, Afrasiabi set him up in a bad way at the beginning. And yes, Blizzard gave him a no ultimatum on following through with it. But you had an ex an expansion and a half to fix that. <laughs> like you you had 3 plus years to find a way around it and you came up with Shadowlands. No. I'm not going to say innocent on this one. This is definitely a guilty thing. I I, I can't with that. <laughs> there are, there's, there, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Oh, win. In rugby, we call it a hospital pass. I'm going to let him off this one. He's going to say it was a no-win situation, and I think that's kind of fair. It is kind of a no-win situation. I don't believe it's 
fully no win, though. Or at least you could have done better than this. <laughs> like, surely you could have done better than this. Surely. It does bring up another criticism for story outside the game. This is one of those criticisms uh. that Denuza is most singled out for. The habit of putting important story not in the game where everyone can see it, but in outside media. Most I don't think that's fair for Denuza. I don't think Denuza has a choice in that. He is at fault for saying he liked it, though. That is a thing. He... It's not his fault that it happened, you know? Like, the the most egregious ones happened way before him. Like, the, 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 uh, Mr. Pandaria to Warlord's Draenor one and the, uh, Legion to BFA one. Those two books were, like, an entire expansion in and of themselves. Like, the, you... Or maybe not an entire expansion, but at least a patch, you know? Like, you could have had the, um, the, 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 the whole bit with Stromgard and, and the, the Desolate Council thing. You really could have had that just be a storyline in WoW that took, like, an hour. You know, like, that literally was a patch as a book. But that wasn't his, that wasn't a newser. That was Afrasabi. So, not his fault with those two books specifically. And, but, but, and again, with a bunch of the short stories and stuff. And again, WoW has always had outside media. WoW's greatest strength for a while, for a while was its outside media. In fact, I'll say this, in vanilla, what they used to do in, in, in vanilla and in, in, the Burning Crusade, they had a website that you could go to, and it, it had, it had, a, like, role-play audio recordings, it had a, an, an online, like, book, like, library with, like, interactable books with pictures and pages that you could, like, physically, like, click, and it would turn the page. And it was, it was all about stories in WoW. It was like, you know, the, like, the, the, the gnomes of Nomragon going on an adventure, the three... The, the three dwarves of Ironforge going out and getting drunk. Them taking the, the voice clips from, like, Warcraft 3 and putting them and, like, mixing them together to make sort of a, a, a narrative and a dialogue. They, and, and again, the, the interactive storybook, which I loved. I loved the interactive storybook. The whole thing where it's, like, for, for like, th this happened to me where I was a night elf. I went to uh, Darkshore for the first time. I wandered around and you see... The, the, the giant skull with the glowing sword sticking out of the head. And you're like, what the heck is that? And you get, like, a couple of quests saying that, oh, people are, are like, the, the, the cultists are, are, are inspecting this. And it's all mysterious and ominous. And it's like this dark and eerie wood with the, the creepy skull. <coughs> Excuse me. And you're like, what in the world is that? And then you go to the... Online, the you 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 go to the interactive online library and you you read through the fable of Sogoth the Slitherer and 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 his and his and his fight with 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 Tear and and you you learn about Tear from that and you're like oh my god Tear from like Tear's fall because that's where he fell and and then Tear's silver hand and that's the order of the silver hand and oh my god that's so cool and that's interactive storytelling outside the game Warcraft 3 is a different game from World of Warcraft and the, you had story from that going into this because obviously it's the, it's the sequel outside Ga game narrative and story was a huge strength for WoW for a long time. The problem came in when it was distilled down to just the books and the short stories and a bunch of the stuff had to go away. The interactive library went away. The voice lines went away. The Nomragon News Network videos, that stopped. You know, the, the, the podcasts went away. All that stuff faded out and it became just the books that you had to pay for in order to read. 
that was where the big problem came from. It's no longer you're having this big multimedia stuff going on all around you that you can that you can find and 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 like sort of piece things together and have this nice little like adventure going from thing to things like oh this this audio is hinting at this this art like thing being that's being put out on the forums which is which is sort of hinting towards this this YouTube series which has a little like hinting towards something that's happening in the next patch like no, that's not happening it's just here's a book it's 30 bucks buy it and that's where the big problem came from and that was not denuser's fault <laughs> denuser did not do this the only thing denuser was guilty of was saying that he liked it and to be fair to denuser <laughs> before it became just the books that was a fair thing to say. That was one of WoW's major strengths. So, uh. <laughs> the novels. And this is, of course, something that WoW has always done. And I think the most egregious example is war crimes, where the whole reason okay, and yeah, explanation he's, he's for why warlords of Draenor that's what even I, yeah, happened I just said was that. published exclusively in those pages. It's wild. It's like, if you didn't read that book, then one day you just woke up in game. Garrosh has escaped. We all hate Rathian now. The dark portal has just opened, but it's a different color and orcs from 30 years ago. And also an alternate timeline. I mean, to be fair, we had the cinematic and everything. That sort of I'm set sorry, some but of that up. But entire to be fair, uh, we had, you know, we had, the, we had the, the, the BlizzCon cinematic and stuff. I did not know that was Garrosh in the cinematic until I was told. Because it doesn't look anything like him in-game. So, fair. Existence wasn't dumb enough from a story point of view anyway. Hey, to then World of the Draenor was not dumb. It, it was, it, it was a cool idea was that was executed insane. incredibly poorly. As far as novels go, <laughs> reign never gets this bad. Shadows Rising is actually kind of the perfect pre-expansion novel. No uh, important agree. plot it hurts to miss. A fun romp with some characters you like. It's great. It was, it was a good one. novel, though, not so much. Not yeah. only does this book give important context and explanation to English Yeah, but that, it came after the fact, the though. It was but like, oh, here's all the stuff that we couldn't put in our expansion. Too late. It explains <laughs> yeah. Sylvanas' relationship with the Jailer and why she follows... To be fair... To this book, it was delayed. <laughs> it it was supposed to come out at the beginning of Shadowlands, and it was delayed till the end. We believe because of COVID, but we're not entirely sure exactly why. But it was theorized that it, it was because of COVID, because uh, Shadowlands was during COVID time, uh, like like right when it first came out too, which was awful. But most other gaming companies thrived at this point, whereas WoW floundered, and that was because they were so used to doing everything in the office, they'd never actually set up any contingencies to be out of the office. So <clears throat> they had a they they floundered a lot in Shadowlands because of that, and it sucks and it's unfortunate. And you give them a little bit of uh, deference with it, and I, I'm going to do that with this book as well. If this book had come out before the Shadowlands, it still would have been a, an, an almost war crimes level of, oh, we didn't put the context <laughs> of everything that's happening in the game. <laughs> so here's a book. <laughs> but <clears throat> the, the, the argument that it came out a year too late, it was not the book's fault him a lot better than the game ever manages. Now, I think the why is explained in game two. I certainly understood her emotional justification. She pretty much just it was says a, a good it reason. It was kind of petulant, but like. yeah, The thing sure. that we really miss in game is the details around how Sylvanas and the Jailer met or like any interaction between them, really. There is none of it in game. It is all in the novel. It's not ideal. I'm going to call that a fail for Denuza for sure. But those aren't the only out of game media that he that's not he, he i'm actually being a little bit more fair to to this point than than taliesin is being which is surprising i mean true he he is guilty of putting 
too much into this book. But <laughs> there are little caveats to that. Like the, there should be little bits hanging off of this one where it's like he's overall guilty. He's overall responsible. This was his fault. However, <laughs> we had COVID, which was a big problem. <laughs> we, 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 we had, like, obviously the story was the So I, I would say he's two parts guilty, one part innocent. Still ultimately guilty, but it's kind of weird that he's not bringing that up. He worked on, oh no, five, the Titan's point of view. You know, this uh. might go down as Steve's biggest legacy in terms of law the recontextualizing of the chronicle oh, books from no. omnipotent word of god <laughs> to an account from the titan's point of view people yeah. are still outraged by this today and saying you should be. how it invalidates everything in those three books as Not being invalidates, potentially invalidates but it recontextualizes i am sympathetic to that complaint i genuinely am you are not wrong if that's your opinion on chronicle personally my personal opinion on this personally is that it's better this way for me if it had released that way then i would agree with that if you had been told from the start that that was the intention of the chronicles books then i agree that having it be a perspective on the things instead of being a hard rule set for the story and the lore's background because that's what the Chronicles were. That's what they were released to be. Was they were the hard set rules. This is how things are in our universe. Some people may not know that. Some people may uh, have their own interpretations of things. But this is how it is. And then they came out with the whole no this is the unreliable narrator and we're like then what is the rule set <laughs> and they said there is not one they said that we will play hard and fast with the rules and that is an extremely unsatisfactory answer that is incredibly unsatisfying and enraging especially when you pay money to get those books on a false pretense like that. So if it had been released as this is a Titan's perspective on Wiles lore and history, and here are some deeper narratives from the perspective of the greater plane of order, then, yay, great. This is where the Titans are coming from. This is their perspective on things. This is how they see the world. And we should expect Titans and their Titan constructs and everything Titan related should see things from this point of view. Great. Love that for them. But they didn't do that. <laughs> that is not what they did. <laughs> that is not what Denuser did he took a legacy that was hard that was hard set in stone and said it was false <laughs> he took all of your money and said it was worthless that is what denuser did <laughs> so he is hard guilty on this one and and blizzard is too like like pre blizzard if if they had gone with these are the hard set rules fine hold yourselves to them you are now beholden to the rules you have set, and if you need to break them, you need to explain why and give it due deference. Don't just invalidate all of it by saying all of it's false now. <laughs> you don't do that. <laughs> It's more interesting to have the account of the Titans' actions by their watchers and indeed just by the historians of Azeroth be potentially questionable. If not wrong, then just seen from a certain bias and point of view. I just yeah. find that interesting. It gives us fun things I agree. like the broker cosmology chart from the Shadowlands Grimoire, which appears to contradict the Chronicle version, but is actually the same chart. I agree with this too. I agree with this point. However... First of all, the, 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 the Broker's Cosmology chart thing was very 
condescending to anyone who believed that the other one was right, which up until this point was us. Like, if they had come out initially saying that the Chronicle was the Titan's perspective, and then they're like, ha ha, this is, this is the Shadowlands perspective, and the Shadowlands perspective is saying that the Titans are stupid because they see things from a different perspective. Great. But that's not what they did. <laughs> that is not what they did, and that's what they should have done from the start. <laughs> and so Denuser coming out halfway when it's way too late with saying, oh no, those old books are old and these new books are new. Bad. Art bad, bad, bad. Opposite viewpoint. We go over that in one of my legit favorite videos that we have like, ever made. I just like it. Like, and it appears to be the idea. Like, that sure. The you can say that it's better this way, and I agree so with you. It is, a legacy it is better impact. not to have the hard rule set perfectly laid out. It should be something that is discovered and figured out. It should be something you have to piece together. It should be something that you you've you've got the Titans perspective, you you've got the Titans perspective, you've got the the Shadowlands perspective, you've got our perspective and maybe you get one other perspective. Maybe you get like uh, the 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 demon's perspective or you get chaos's perspective from the old gods or something you get a fourth perspective and you you find the dots that all intersect you find the bits that connect together and those are the hard and fast rules because everyone agrees that they are despite being enemies great love that that is what you should have done from the start they didn't do that they did the hard rule set first and then invalidated it after the purchase if it had been for free if it if it had just been one of those online books just like oh here's what we've decided for right now is our rule set this is our like point oh this is this is our uh dnd first edition this is th this is our first edition version of the of the rule set and then the broker shadowland stuff oh this is our third edition version of the rule set and it, it's just a slight tweaking it, it's just a, you know it's it's an evolution of what we've what we used to have done and both of them are for free and available online you can look at them all you want that would have been fine. That would have been great. It's not what they did. They made it for purchase, and then they invalidated it. <laughs> Which is the worst possible way you could have handled this. Act the story for a generation after Steve has now left. I actually call that a low-key infant newser, but you might yeah. disagree. <laughs> would have been, if treated correctly, was not. Therefore, guilty. <laughs> That's fair. Six. There was that time on Twitter. I don't even he care that much about it. Game of Thrones season eight, and is there? I don't even care that much about the Chronicles thing because I didn't purchase it. It's just very annoying that the points that he brings up are true if are true if, and it's like <laughs> it's like Taliesin, you are correct. If this one other thing had not been true, <laughs> but it is, and therefore I cannot agree with you. And that bothers me more than anything else, because I want to agree with this and I can't. Oh, also the Game of Thrones thing, whatever, man. I have a whole story to go with this, but I've been watching for like an hour now and we're like halfway through this video, so I'm going to skip it. But I'm just going to say, I don't really care about his opinions. For Game obviously a complete idiot who should <laughs> not be trusted with any story anywhere and like okay like really who cares if you like the tv show yeah, I exactly think sucks i've seen twitter <laughs> I, i've seen you on twitter I very some much of you like that. some dog shit loads of you probably <laughs> like lost and i'm not gonna hold that against you even though you are definitely wrong because lost sucks but i don't think you can't <laughs> write a good story just because you like lost i just think lots of people like trash sometimes and it's not a reflection on their life or their work beyond that Agreed. seven Agreed. shadowlands just Shadowlands. Whoa! There's so much to unpack with Shadowlands. Why did you spend all that time unpacking things with with BFA and Sylvanas and all that stuff? And then you're just like, ah, oh, just Shadowlands as a whole. That's such a loaded thing. <laughs> of course it's not entirely Denuser's fault that the expansion was what it was. <laughs> like Denuser is the narrative lead designer. Like he did 
he has no control over the mechanics. He has no control over locking us into covenants. He has no control over the patch cadence. He has no control over any of that stuff. Of course it's not Denuser's fault for all of Shadowlands. <laughs> However, the narrative, the story, and how it changed and altered and became worse over time, and, and Corthea's entire storyline being what Corthea's storyline was, what but what, what the ending of Shadowlands' story was, what the whole allegory of death's machine being broken and needing to be fixed but nicer was was Denuser's fault. <laughs> so this is a loaded fucking thing. <laughs> like this is completely unfair. Taliesin, this is saying that Shadowlands as a whole is Denuser's fault is such a bullshit argument. <laughs> Okay, so BFA wasn't really Steve's fault, according to me. What about the expansion after Shadowlands? People hate the lore in that expansion. I've got to be honest, I don't blame them for that either. There's stuff that I like, as I said before, but the lore in this expansion is a complete mess. No one seems to have a handle on it. I've said before that I think his biggest problem is that the Shadowlands probably shouldn't have been an expansion setting because you then have to introduce way more visual and tonal variety to it than the Shadowlands should have had. I don't mind the Shadowlands being a an expansion setting if you build on what was previously established and they chose pointedly to not do that they chose to go wild and crazy they, they, they like they've even said like oh the best thing about shadowlands is that we're not beholden to anything that 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 had to do with wow before we are we are breaking completely new ground and are able to make our own expansion our way with our own stuff and it's completely free of anything to do with Warcraft, which is completely ignoring the fact that every version, like every every culture in WoW has its version of death. Obviously, duh. <laughs> like, World of Warcraft's whole thing is about world building and cultures and and, and, and exploring the, the, the different races and, 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 what, and their beliefs and their cultures and stuff. Where is the light in this? Where, where like, where, where is the culture of death for the believers of the light? You know, where is the orcs culture of death? Where is the trolls culture of death? Where is the gnomes culture of death? Etc. 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 And they pointedly did not do hardly any of it. They did a little bit with Bonsamdi, but he's off in a corner in, in like a tiny piece of the Arden Weald because they wanted to have Bonsamdi, Bonsamdi continue. But they ignored literally everything else. <laughs> Where is the orcs afterlife in the Shadowlands? Nowhere. Because they threw some of them in Maldraxxus and some of them in other places and some of them in Revendreth, et etc., etc. Et They're like, no, all of the faiths and cultures and all of that of, of World of Warcraft, of Azeroth, is wrong. Everything you know about death is wrong. It's completely wrong. All of your cultures are wrong. All of your faiths are wrong. Everything that you, you've done up to this point with all of your spiritualism, all that is hokey pokey. Like, like every, everything, every time you've resurrected like some spirit to commune with the spirits as an orc, balderdash, you know? <laughs> like, really? <laughs> You're going to just devalue everything? All of the stuff, especially like the stuff like the Oshugun, you know, with all the spirits wandering around, and the whole thing with Nerzul and the sh and 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 the, the 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 all of his work with the shadows and the Shadowlands and and the life beyond death and all that stuff, invalidated, completely inval invalidated by the Shadowlands, which is bubkis. <laughs> it's like the Shadowlands, it's, it's, it's gray. There's ghosts in it. Do Revendreth and Maldraxxus and Bastion and Ardenweald look cool and have interesting characters? Yes. Should they have been a part of the very one note, it's just a bit grey with ghosts in Shadowlands? <laughs> no, no. It's a conceptual fail, which 
I don't think it's down to Steve. I'm fairly certain really? that was decided before he took the reins. But I you think that the world of the Shadowlands was developed pre-BFA? You think Legion and backwards? Like, you think sometimes, sometime back then was when they were like, hey, what if we said that all of the religions were wrong, all of the cultures were wrong, and all of these ghosts that we're talking to and bringing back and all that stuff, what if that was just all wrong? And we made up some brand new shit out of nowhere and said that was correct. And we make things like Ard and Wield and Bastion and all that. You thought, you think that's back in Warlords of Draenor? <laughs> really? That far back? I don't know if I agree with... I mean, I don't know the pipeline, okay? I don't know how far back these things are planned. But I I do know that Steve Denuser was in charge from uh, 8.1 onward, you know? So it is possible that it was a little bit too late for him to say no to the settings of the Shadowlands. I'll say that, sure. The stories that happened within it are still his fault. <laughs> <laughs> I do think there is stuff you absolutely can blame him for, like the jailer. Yeah. Huge missed opportunity, very boring bad guy, unsatisfying, unexplored. I don't care if the main focus was intended to be Anduin Sylvanas. We need Even that was a more fail. engaging as far as I'm than this. Zoval absolutely is something Steve would have had creative sway and decisions over. This is a big, big fail for him, Guilty. as far as I'm concerned. As Agreed. is the mess of Shadowlands law in general. Now, yes. I'm willing to be quite forgiving with this expansion because, like... I don't know if you remember, there was a worldwide epidemic and they were still sorting out the yeah. Savannah's mess. But I do think introducing so much reference and recontextualization to old Warcraft 3 yep. lore was a mistake. You can a, do a it huge well, mistake. But there was so much of it. And people were always going to hate it. I actually love Arthas's final fate, but I know. And I think you're wrong. I'm in the minority there. I promise. I think the. See? He does that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there are so many people who think that the Arthas thing was like a big deal. Arthas is a big deal, okay? He like he's not gonna bring up the whole like what they did with the Helm of Domination thing, which you know is an absolute travesty. But it's just a piece of the bad stuff that happened with Arthas' soul. And he's like, oh, you you just got the body pillow, you know, the Arthas body pillow. Oh, isn't it cute that you care so much about this character who was a foundation for World of Warcraft and is on the box of two, like, Blizzard products, you know? <laughs> like, ah, oh, isn't it cute? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to say you're wrong, but it is adorable that you think that way. Fuck off. You know, <laughs> how condescending. Most damning thing you can say is that you get the feeling Shadowlands is going to be referenced the absolute least out of any past expansion <laughs> yeah. in future installments. Like, you feel they're just going to try and ignore most of it. And I don't blame them, honestly. As Eight, you should. Dragonflight. This is a tough one. Dragonflight has... Dragonflight. Denuser has said that Dragonflight is Denuser's baby. He had control over everything. So of course he's guilty. Like immediately, yes. All the stuff I said about Shadowlands that he's not that he wasn't in control of, he was in control of for this one. So he guilty. <laughs> I don't know what else. you you could just skip this bit as far as I'm concerned. Like yes, everything in Shadow everything in Dragonflight was Denuser's fault. <laughs> come in for some passionate criticism I, for its writing yeah. also the good and stuff of it, i think is just but also the bad stuff but my main problem when it comes to dragonflight's writing is on the level of sometimes i literally just don't like the words that have been written <laughs> Steve was the narrative that's called bad writing dragonflight he Shall pitched the concept <laughs> of the expansion out of every game that we've been talking about here dragonflight is the one that from start to finish was his vision and the yep. buck stops with him steve yep. will have ultimately okayed every single line in dragonflight which i yep. think is clunky or cringe and he deserves yep. criticism for that but yep. ultimately it's not his writing i generally 
so? <laughs> you just said that the buck stops with him and he okayed all of it. Therefore, while it's not his writing, he was responsible for it. <laughs> Therefore, it's his fault. That's what that means. I really like the themes and story beats of Dragonflight, which you'd imagine are much more than narrative director's actual job. So I think I like his work on this expansion. Like, great example, okay? The dialogue Dumb in the Amirisil end cinematic I'm sorry. is no. not good. We all know that. But the thing that's happening here, the aspects getting blessed by Amirisil, the actual story, no. that's cool. No, that's a good story isn't. beat. And if we blame <laughs> no, him for not. the Jailer, as we should, then I guess we should probably credit him for the Primal Incarnates and Aridicron, who are... Which was a great concept that was fumbled incredibly badly. <laughs> like, I love this image that he's got here of them. I'm going to move myself down. Whoops, that's not it. That one. We Like, this image we got here? I love this image. I loved everything about when this happened. And I hate what they did with it. This, the initial concept for these guys was that they were going to be like the Psycho Rangers and Power Rangers, okay? They were going to be the anti-Dragon Flight. They were going to be, they, they were going to span multiple expansions being the anti-dragon flight being the ones that are trying to undermine the titans trying to undermine the dragons like as the dragons are coming to power and if we're going into the age of dragons these we're going to be the antithesis of that what did they do with them <laughs> He became the, the like like main boss dude ran away <laughs> almost immediately. <laughs> Farak became the, the 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 expansion ending boss fight, which was almost a copy paste of the first raid boss who died, <laughs> and then she joins us. So all of this fell apart almost immediately. <laughs> Despite the original concept being these were going to be the antithesis. These were going to be the anti-age of the dragon. This, this was going to be our long-spanding bad guy team. Something out of a Sunday cartoon, you know? Where it's like, you got the main bad guy and their hench people and they're going around and they're messing with stuff. And they're coming up with the monsters of the week and all that good stuff. That was the, the concept that was sold to us that was not fulfilled in any way. <laughs> and so, no. Great baddies. Generally, I think people really like the side stories in this expansion too. And if we can criticize him for- Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who? There's like maybe three good side stories in Dragonflight. Who like? Who liked all of them? <laughs> who liked all the side stories in Dragonflight? Come on, br g give me one person who had no problems with any of the story in Dragonflight. Give me that person because they did not experience any of it <laughs> badly written quests that he didn't what? write which i think we should then perhaps we should give him credit for good quests that he didn't write as well and for being a lead that facilitates his team and creates an environment i, I do flip. believe that is true we should be giving him all the credit for both the good and the bad in Dragonflight. In Dragonflight, that was his baby he was the narrative lead the buck stops with him he was in control of everything he is responsible for all of it give him Give him the, the, the weight of responsibilities for the bad stuff that he didn't write and all the praise for the good stuff that he didn't write. Yes, 
I do believe that to be true. Flourish. I don't know. I feel like we're still a little bit close to this one, and the picture will definitely become clearer in the coming years, like it did with BFA and Shadowlands. But I'm going to tentatively say that for now, overall, despite the lost momentum in Act 2 and the lack of overall stakes, something I think will probably seem a bit less like a problem in future expansions. And the whole Amir Drusil like, thing, as, which I you know, despise. When Oridicron started everything rolling, I'm going to say that overall... I think his work on Dragonfly Guilty. is a success. Guilty. You may disagree. That's fine too. This is all pretty subjective. I think I'm going to finish this analysis of his legacy with this. There's no doubt that Steve Denuser came into the job at probably the most challenging point in WoW's history story-wise. I think he and the rest of the team absolutely nailed I some guess. aspects of that cleanup. Bad a little controversial, but I can give him that, sure. He, he and the rest of the team absolutely nailed some aspects of that cleanup, <laughs> badly misfired on others. And I guess I've got a bias, because I've always liked Steve on a personal level. I feel like a lot of the attacks made on him were I guess that's fair, because I don't know him. and personal, <laughs> and not the kind of thing that we should encourage in any community of grown-ups whatsoever. True. Also, if it's true what I've heard, that he wasn't treated very well by Blizzard at I the end. I don't know anything about that. I know he doesn't say that, but it's, it's something I've heard. Then that also completely sucks because i'm sorry i mean to be fair who was treated well at blizzard as far as i as far as i know no one was ever treated well at all in blizzard <laughs> like no one he, he deserved better because any employee deserves better than to be dicked around by a multinational corporation i'm very excited about wow's new narrative direction under Metzger <clears throat> and terran gregory and the whole concept of the world soul saga just presses all my buttons so i don't know maybe that's put me in a good mood but if we are summing up steve's legacy i'm gonna choose to remember him as the guy who had to do a lot of firefighting over the course of four or five years was part of a team that undoubtedly Undoubtedly righted the very off-course ship that was World of Warcraft and helped lay the foundations no. for hopefully more <laughs> optimistic times to come. You know, if WoW recovers or even flourishes during the World Soul Saga, we are That's a very flowery way of portraying him, because I disagree whole or like not wholeheartedly, but I very much disagree. Especially with the whole writing of the ship thing. Nah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Blizzard had a horrible, horrible time, promised to do better, and then proved that it was not going to do that. That's not Steve Denuser's fault. That's not Steve Denuser's responsibility. But he did not help. <laughs> are going to look back at Dragonfly as being probably the most important expansion in WoW's history. And that's and disgusting. Yeah, obviously that comes from mechanics and instant... Not what I said, what he said. The whole Dragonflight's going to go forward being the most important expansion in WoW history. That disgusts me. I hate that. Because I don't like Dragonflight's story at all. At all. At all. This isn't things as well, but... It was Steve's thing. There's lots that happened under his watch that I think is dumb or bad or actually just kind of offensive. But I can say that about the absolute yeah. greats too, so whatever. I'm very glad. No, this not is whatever. Public Come on. And all the streamers can stop skirting. You can't call this a trial of Steve Denuser and then end it off with there's a lot of stuff that I found bad or offensive, but whatever it when people bring it up in chat and we can all finally start looking forwards again because call me an old softy shill but i'm really optimistic about what you are an old softy next. shill i was thinking absolutely there's not much point of this 100 percent because we have the podcast all right uh, i'm not here for this bit so i'm not gonna watch it but you guys can you can like absolutely go and and watch the original uh video and all that good stuff uh, like, you know, I, I have nothing against Talias and Avatel. I really enjoy a lot of their content. I, like I said, he is very much a positive force when it comes to those stuff, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially when it comes to WoW. Lots of WoW people, myself included, love to hate on WoW. It's very fun because there's a lot to hate on WoW, but it's also important to remember that there are good things. There's a reason why we love WoW and want it to do well. We all want WoW to do well. We want it to be better than it was before. 
And he's just, you know, an overly positive version for that, which is fine. And I have no problems with that. And I have no problems with Taliesin. And I like him a lot. And I watch his videos, clearly. <laughs> I like the guy. I disagree with him. I disagree with him a lot. <laughs> That's nothing against Taliesin. I like Taliesin. <laughs> I don't like his condescending attitude. But you know what? We're all kind of guilty of that. I, I do it, too. You know, we all kind of have that whole, my opinion's right, your opinion's wrong. He's just a little smarmy about it, which is, I guess, part of his character. I don't know. It's annoying. I don't, I don't, I still don't hate the guy for it, you know? He's, he's, a, he's a cool guy. But that's not the point. We shouldn't be basing it on personal stuff anyway. But I had to get it out of the way because a lot of people do put it on on personal stuff. And that was kind of his point, too, with, at the end, where it's like, people go way too personal with the newser. And I agree with that too. You don't don't hate on Denuser uh, in his personal life, you know. <laughs> hate his writing, and I hate his writing. <laughs> I do not like Denuser's writing. Denuser as a person, fine, but his writing, oh my god, he did not. Taliesin did not even touch upon most of Dragonflight. He did Dragonflight as a whole, like just Dragonflight. Just Shadowlands. Like, what loaded things to go guilty or innocent to? Like, you you needed to break that down. I mean, admittedly, my video on this is an hour and a half, whereas yours was only 26 minutes. <laughs> you probably should have had about an hour on this one. I really do think that Steve Denuser's legacy deserved an hour of breaking down as much as possible what was and was not his fault. But for 26 minutes, he did cover it a, a bunch. And I, I feel like I gave my opinions and I made myself fairly clear. I don't hate the newser as a person, but gosh darn it, his writing was awful in a lot of places. He had a very difficult job to do. He just did it poorly, <laughs> you know? <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys have opinions, please leave them in the comment section. Be nice, if possible. You know, uh, a, a, a nice quote that I always love uh, from Doctor Who, especially, was, uh, you know, always try to be nice but never fail to be kind. You know... If you're going to be an asshole, I'm an asshole. We're all assholes, and it's fine. It's great. Sometimes it's funny. Be an asshole in the comments, but be kind, you know? <laughs> Try to be nice, but don't fail to be kind. All right. Goodbye, everybody.